Hello, and thank you for joining the Vidalia Onion Educational Conference as part of the 2021 Virtual Southeast Regional Fruit and Vegetable Conference. My name is Derek Bowen, and I'm the Tattnall County Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension Agent for the University of Georgia, and I'll be the moderator for this presentation. Pesticide CEU and CCA credits are available for most presentations offered during the live Southeast Regional Conference. Check the pesticide CEU guide for a list of approved presentations and participating states. The pesticide CEU guide is located in the event resources tab under the media player. The guide is also available at the resources center located on the main menu of the conference platform. Please note, pesticide credits will only be available for registered attendees and only during the live conference. Credits will not be available for on-demand viewing. There is a simple three-step process to receive pesticide CEU and CCA credits. The first is to go to the audience chat box located on the left side of your screen and type your name, last name, and the states for which you are requesting credits. Again, go to the audience chat box located on the left side of your screen and type your first name, last name, and the states for which you are requesting credits. You will need to do this for every presentation to request CEU credits. The second step is to sign out at the end of every presentation. To sign out, go to the audience chat box and type your first name, last name, and the states for which you are requesting credits. You will be reminded to sign out at the end of the presentation. The third step is to complete the pesticide CE registration. You only have to complete this registration one time during the conference. This is not required with every presentation. To access the Pesticide CEU registration web link, open the Pesticide CEU guide on the Event Resources tab located under the media player. The Pesticide CEU registration web link is located on the front cover of the guide. This presentation is pre-recorded to reduce technical difficulties. We will be answering your questions live at the end of the presentation. You can submit a question at any point during this presentation by typing your questions in the questions box and pressing send. Again, we just want to thank you, our 2021 conference sponsors and exhibitors, and we want to encourage all guests to visit the virtual trade show and featured products pavilion. And lastly, don't forget to join us each morning for coffee chats and each evening for networking. Check the conference agenda for more details. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Lee Yinping, Professor of Biology at Fort Valley State University. She will be presenting the presentation, Impact of White Flies in the Agricultural Areas of Central Georgia. Dr. Yinping, I'm turning it over to you now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Derek. And, uh, Yeah, I'm Yinping Li, a uh, postdoc uh, in Dr. George Ambata's lab at uh, Kansas uh, at Fort Valley State University. Oh, this uh, 
The sweet potato whitefly is a major insect pest of vegetables around the world, and they can cause the direct damage by feeding on the leaves, uh, on the undersides of the leaves. And uh, you can see that from the first picture of the second row. Uh, and also they can secrete the honeydew and the sooty mold can build on the honeydew. So uh, which can affect the photosynthesis of the leaves. And uh, the um, most, uh, most uh, uh, devastating damage caused by the sweet potato whitefly is, uh, uh, is to transfer the plant viruses. Um, the, the sweet potato whitefly has uh, has been uh, favored as a super vector because they can transfer over 100 plant viruses. And the most uh, devastating virus is called the tomato yellow leaf curl virus. And uh, you can see the symptom from the first picture. Oh, yes. And uh, those damages can cause uh, uh, enormous economic losses. So. Uh, so, for example, the damage to the to the vegetable in Georgia caused over one hundred sixteen million dollars economic losses in two thousand seventeen, and in our project we concentrate on we concentrate on three vegetables. Uh, one is snap bean, and the second is tomato, and the third is the squash plants, and. Uh, since the sweet potato fight fly can cause the enormous economic losses, the greenhouse growers or the farmers need to control this pest. And the insecticides are still the primary means for the sweet potato white fly control. And however, due to the intensive insecticide application, the sweet potato white fly has developed uh, extensive resistance to many insecticides. And from this table, you can see uh, the chemical classes and the representative active ingredients that the sweet potato white fly has developed the resistance to. So since they have already developed uh, uh, extensive uh, insecticide resistance, so other alternatives should be warranted, such as uh, resistant, pl pl resistant plant varieties, and the biological control using the nematodes. So let's look at the first uh, project, the sweet potato white fly and the snapping project one. And um, in this, in this uh, project, we want to determine the most resistant re snapping varieties against the sweet potato white fly infestation. And the second, we want to evaluate the interaction among the sweet potato white fly, natural enemies, and pollinators. And uh, this is the materials and method. So uh, we conduct the field trials, and the, the design structure is uh, a randomized completely block design with three blocks, and the trial was, can, uh, was tracked for six weeks. So the treatment structure is um, the 24 varieties of the snapping plants. You can see more information from the next slide. And after we check the, the collect the data and analyze data, we use the generalized linear mix model in the software so in SAS software. And the data we collected includes four parts. The first is the number of the sweet potato white fly adults eggs and the nymphs. And second is the number of the pollinators. Third is the number of the natural enemies. Fourth is the number of the other insect pests on snapping plants. So that's uh, for the experiment. And uh, you can see more information from those slides about the four, 24 varieties of the snapping plants. And after we set up this experiment and we collect the data and for six weeks and analyze the data. So right now we have already complete analyzing the data for the number of the white fly adults, eggs and nymphs. So uh, let's look at the result for that. First, the number of the white fly adults per snapping leaf from week one to week six. So, 
uh, after we analyzed the data, we didn't find any significant difference among the 24 varieties about the number of the white fly adults. And but we did find a significant differences among the weeks. So we have the graph here. The x axis represents the week, and the y axis represents the number of the white fly adults per leaf. So the first two weeks, uh, um, the flowering uh, stage for the snapping plants, and for the third week and the fourth week. Uh, some snapping plants are flowering, some snapping plants were pouting. And for the fifth week and, fifth week and the sixth week, uh, the, most of the snapping plants are pouting. So from this graph, you can see the number of the white fly adults per snapping leaf was most on week one. It's almost 20, it's around 22 adults per leaf and decreased from week two to four, uh, decreased from week one to week four and increased from week four to week six. So this is for the white fly adults. And now let's look at the number of the white fly eggs per 0.5 centimeters, a square centimeter of the one snapping leaf for 24 varieties from week one to week six. So, this, uh, you can see the X from the pictures. And um, after we analyzed data, we found the significant differences uh, on the uh, white fly X among the 24 varieties of the snapping plants and among the wigs. And the interaction between the variety and the wig is significant. So we uh, made the graph or make the comparisons among the varieties within each week. So the first graph is shows the first week. Uh, the x-axis represents uh, 24 varieties, and the y-axis represents the number of the white flag eggs per leaf disk. So from this graph, you can see the number of the white flag eggs per uh, 0.5 square centimeter of one snapping leaf was least for varieties four and uh, nine on week one. And uh, we all made the comparison statistically. Uh, I mean, the reason I didn't put the lighters above the bar, I just want to try to keep this simple and uh, yeah, just to let you see it much clearly. So next, let's look at the week two. And from this graph, you can see the number of the white flag eggs uh, was least for varieties 1, 6, 9, 23, and 24. So next, for the week 3, and um, you can see the white flies, the number of the white fly eggs were pretty low, and uh, you, ca you cannot see significant difference among most of the varieties. So the number of for the, uh, the number of the white fly eggs will range from 2.4 to 70.6. And it's the same thing for week four, the number is kind of low and it was ranged from 0.6 to 11.2. And it's the same for week five and week six. So this is all for the information uh, about the white fly X. And now the, this is, um, information, this is the number of the uh, of white fly names per 0.5 square centimeter of the one snapping leaf for 24 varieties from week one to week six. And also it's the same thing, we analyze the data in the SAS software, we found the significant interaction between the variety and the week, and also find the significant differences on the white, uh, white fly names number among the varieties and among the weeks. So we made the comparison within each week. So for week one, you can see the number of the white fly names per 0.5 square centimeter of the one snapping leaf ranged from 0.9 to 7.8. It's kind of pretty low. You cannot see significant difference among most of the varieties. 
And it's the same thing for week two. And for week three, we can see the number of the white flag names increased. And we can see the significant differences among the varieties. And you can see for varieties one, for variety one, nine, and 11, and uh, the number of the white fly names was least. I think there's a, some, uh, there's something different for the figures, but uh, you can see that from the text. So for the week four, uh, we can see the number of the white fly names uh, uh, was least for varieties one, not, uh, one, uh, 11, 12, 18, 19, and 23. So for week five, you can see the number of the white fly names per uh, 0.5 square centimeter of the one snappy leaves was least for varieties 1, 11, 20, and 23. So for week six, uh, the variety 1, 10, 11, 20, and 23 had the least number of the white fly names. And they, they have been circled using the uh, right circle. So that's for the result. Let's come to the conclusions for this uh, field trial. So first, there was no significant differences on the number of the white fly idols among the varieties. And the second, the number of the white fly idols per snapping leaf was most on week one. And decrease from week two to four and increase from week four to week six. And third, we can see the number of the white fly eggs per 0.5 square centimeter of the one snapping leaf was least for variety nine. And the number of the white fly names per 0.5 square centimeter of the one snapping leaf was least for varieties one, 11, and 23. So the conclusion is like, uh, uh, the most we found the most resistant snapping varieties against the white fly was varieties one, uh, Royal Burgundy, and variety nine, Jade, variety eleven, Golden Rod, variety twenty three, Long Tender Green. So that's for the field trial, and also we conducted the laboratory experiment for the snapping and the white fly project. So we we are interested in evaluating the effect of nine strains of the animal pathogenic nematodes in surprising the white flies uh, uh, nymph on the underside of the snappy leaves. So the animal pathogenic nematodes in the general heterohabitatus in the standard name are important biological control agents. And the entomopathogenic nematodes play an important role in sweet potato white fly management. There, there are lots of uh, rep, uh, reports before. And uh, for our experiment, the project as uh, the objectives first, we want to determine the effect of nine strains of the animal pathogenic nematodes in surprising the sweet potato white fly names. And second, we want to determine the three animal-pathogenic nematode strains with a high virulence against the sweet potato white fly names for the greenhouse experiment in the future. So now let's look at the materials and method. The design structure is the completed randomized design with two trials and three reps per trial. And the treatment structure is one water control and nine strings of the entomopathogenic nematodes. And you can see more information from the next slide. And the data we collected was the number of the dead sweet potato white fly names uh, after three days of the treatment applications. And after that, we check the experiment and collect the data, analyze data using the um, generalized linear mix model in SAS software. And 
The next slides will show you the treatments and nine strains of the antimon pastani nematodes and one water control. And their application rate for the nematodes are all uh, 10,000 IGs per milliliter. And here, uh, this slide show you the experiment procedure. And uh, we cast a number of the sweet potato white fly nymphs on the underside of the snappy leaves and then put the nematode solution into the sprayer and use the sprayer to spray the anosize of the snapping leaves and then put the snapping leaves into the petri dish with the two percent agar and then we put all the petri dishes in the incubator and uh, with the environmental conditions at 26 centigrade degree and 12 light and 12 dark and the explorer time is uh, 72 hours. So after that, we check the experiment and analyze data, got the result. So from this figure, you can see X axis represents the treatments, the 10 treatments, and Y axis represents the mortality of the 13 star of the sweet potato white fly names. And uh, after we made the comparison, you can see the mortality of the 13 star of the sweet potato white fly nymphs was significantly higher for uh, nematode strains of HB, HF, SC, and S, uh, SRE. Yes, SRE. And uh, now let's come to the conclusions for the laboratory experiment about snapping and white fly and nematodes. So first, we found that all the treatments resulted in significantly higher mortality than the water control. And second, we found the most virulent animal pesticide nematode strains against the white fly names. They are H bacteria, uh, HBVS stream and uh, HFK22 stream and SC all stream and SRAR, 70C, and E stream. So this is all for our sweet potato white fly and the snapping product. Now let's look at the sweet potato white fly and the tomato product. So we conducted the same laboratory experiment uh, as what we did for the snapping plants. So we also evaluate evaluated the effect of nine strains of the anthemopastanic nematodes against the sweet for the white fly names on the underside of the uh, tomato leaves. So everything and the experiment design, materials, and method were all the same as what we did for the snapping leaves. So after we analyzed data, we got the result. And we, we found that the mortality of the sweet potato names was not significantly different among all the treatments. And also the mortality of the sweet potato white fly names were pretty low. So we cannot identify the most virulent and pestilent nematodes strains against the white fly on the underside of the tomato leaves based on the current result. So this is for our uh, sweet potato white fly and the tomato product. And the next is for the sweet potato white fly and the squash product. So uh, first we multiplied the uh, sweet, uh, squash seeds in the field. And however, those plants were all killed by the early frost. And the seeds were not mature and cannot be used for the next season. And also we observed the occurrence of the sweet potato white fly and also the virus on the squash plants. And this sweet potato white fly was well, uh, observed, but the population was not abandoned and a very few virus symptom was found. So this is for our sweet potato and the squash product. Now, that's all for our three vegetables in our product. And uh, here we want to talk about the future plans. So the first, 
uh, the first project for the snapping project, we will uh, keep checking the, uh, the data for the pollinators and nitroanimates and other insects on the snapping plants and analyze the data in the future, evaluate the interaction between among the sweet potato white fly and the um, natural enemy and the pollinators. And also we will repeat the whole field trial in March 2021. And for the second, the tomato product, we will repeat the experiment, the laboratory experiment on the uh, tomato leaves and uh, try to uh, try to identify the most virulent animal pathogenic strains for the future greenhouse experiment. And the third is the squash product. We will request more squash seeds from, from green and conduct the field trial in March 2021. So this is all for the project. And uh, this is um, our acknowledgments. And uh, also, we are happy to answer your questions. And uh, what's more, at the beginning, I did mention that I'm very, uh, I'm the postdoc in Dr. George Ambada's lab at Fort Valley State University. And uh, I'm very honored to be delegated by Dr. George Ambada to make this presentation to everyone. And uh, we are very happy to answer your questions and get your comments and suggestions. Thank you.